Welcome back. I'm Pastor Cat. This is your five minute devotional. So this week I had a very interesting meeting. I met with a young man who'd grown up in the church and we began to talk about what it takes to be saved. And we walked through Romans, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Therefore, right, Christ, John 3, 16. I'll put those passages in the description so that you can look them up if you don't know exactly which ones I'm talking about. Anyway, through the midst of that, he basically had a very interesting question. And that was that what if later on in life you have a struggle, a struggle of faith, where you come to a crossroads and you say, man, there are so many trials and tribulations in the world. How can a just God let children die or these horrible things happen? If I have this crisis of faith, do I lose my salvation? That brought us into a great discussion about eternal security. What I found interesting was he'd grown up in church his entire life. This was a college age student and he'd never heard of the concept of eternal security. And that brings us to our passage for today that I I find fascinating and really leads us down that road towards understanding God's grace in an eternal sense, no matter where I am personally in my life. And that is Romans chapter eight. We're only doing eight verses today and I'll make sure that I put them on the screen so you can follow along. Clearly it says this, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him over for us all. How will he not also with him freely give us all things. The first point I want to make is that this is a free gift, not something we earn, thereby not something we can just throw away either. It's not actually our choice. It wasn't ours to possess. This is a gift. It now comes to us through the Son. He goes on in verse 33. It says this, who will bring a charge against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. Who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is he who died. Yes, rather who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who also intercedes from up for us. Point number two is that we're not the one trying to defend our lives and say, yes, I've lived good enough. I've been a good enough person to inherit eternal life. We actually have um, the Father sitting as judge and Christ as our advocate in between. So it doesn't matter how great an arguer or how good an orator you are, um, Christ is dealing with all of that part. Now here is the part where that leads me personally to believe in eternal security, starting at verse 35. It says, who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword, just as it is written, for your sake, we are all being put to death all day long. We were considered as sheep to be slaughtered, but in these things, we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. None of those things can separate us from the love of God. For I'm convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depths, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So if you happen to be in a position this week where you feel like something is separating you from God, perhaps an addiction or a personal attitude or your circumstances of life, realize that nothing is bigger, big enough to make that separation. That even goes as far as to say, I personally can at some point in my life have serious doubts about the validity of the Bible and I can set that aside and just because I set God aside does not mean he set me aside. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. The last point I wanna make is this does bring us to the fact um, that you and I don't get to decide someone else's salvation. That is absolutely personal. Whether they have received Christ, whether they have accepted his lordship or not. Once that decision has been made, then it is locked in for eternity. 
So if you know someone who feels like they've walked away from God and they've walked too far, I encourage you to share Romans chapter 8 with them. I find it hugely encouraging. I pray that you have to. If you have questions, comments, concerns, or you just want to argue eternal security versus um, a continual perpetual um, acceptance and denial and acceptance and denial, you can put in the comments below. I'd love to engage with you. Well, God bless. I'll see you next week. Thank you.